Welcome back, everyone. I'm so excited that you're with us on 33 Founders today because I'm here with Daniel Alonso, the Vice President of Business Development at IMS. Thanks so much for being with me today. Hi there. Thank you for having me. So Daniel, IMS is really pioneering the movement for big tech companies and brands to shift their marketing efforts towards Latin America. Can you introduce us to your work and the efforts that you're placing with each of your partners? Absolutely. So IMS has, has we've, we've been really trying to push forward at the, the whole notion of LATAM for the past 10 years, right? We're 10 years old, um, but it's really been in the past uh, few years that, that we've really exploded this whole notion of working with fast-moving companies and helping them um, really look at LATAM as a really strong opportunity for them to expand and grow besides their maybe their original market or their, their U.S. Uh, sort of development. You know, we, we really feel that, that LATAM should be really in close proximity to that development, um, close to whatever their, their natural or their U.S. D development is. First, because it's right next door to the U.S. And second, because there's a massive opportunity in terms of the audience, uh, how connected the audience is, um, how they over-index in the use of uh, smartphones and mobile phones and how eager they are to, to really participate in a lot of these elements. So we've, we've really created this notion of working with fast-moving companies and helping them enter into the region, um, both in terms of how to grow their user base and how to um, position their brand appropriately, but significantly also in terms of, of how to monetize their advertising opportunities within the region. You mentioned mobile first and by the end of 2016 you guys expect there to be 200 million smartphones that are connected to the internet yeah um you know i think it's a trend that that, that can be observed globally um but certainly latam over indexes um we've heard or you've heard um, a lot the term probably leapfrogging and that's really how a lot of these consumers are coming online for the first time via mobile phone and, and completely leapfrogging over a you know desktop or a laptop connection. Um, we also, uh, we, as you probably know, we put out a great study that we developed with Comscore in the beginning of the year in terms of the LATAM online consumer. And, and the reality is we know now today, we have the hard numbers that prove this, that there's a lot more access uh, via mobile phone and via smartphone online via apps than there was or than there is via desktop or via laptop. I was really surprised to learn how much more prevalent apps are there. You have users spending an average of 20 hours on their apps every month and each user has an average of 18 apps on their phone. Yeah, it, it, it's surprising, right? Um, you know, for us, it was um, uh, maybe some of these, some of the data is is not as surprising as other elements of data, but it certainly is good to be able to now look back and have hard numbers that, that sort of back a lot of these things up. But the reality is the the amount of apps that users are downloading um, besides whatever is already preloaded in their in their phones is is quite significant, as you just mentioned. And and not only is the number of apps, but it's also the hours of interaction and the frequency with which they're interacting with these apps. Um, you know, we're finding how some of these different applications really form part of their daily life um, into how they're interacting both socially or interacting in terms of the media that they're consuming, the information that they're, that they're, that they're looking for. I mean, I think what, what it really comes down to is we learned that the LATAM online consumer um, is extremely, is hyper-connected and is, is really social and it really understands what they like and where to get it and expects to be able to interact with brands via these apps and via this information that they can that they can obtain. I'm glad you mentioned that I was watching a great panel from I believe sometime in June with Marin your CMO who was chatting with some of the leaders from Foursquare, Foursquare, Twitter and Spotify. And one of the things that Noah from Foursquare mentioned is that their users in Latin America are posting more photos and they're checking in much more often and it makes me think of the new consumer journey that you and I were just talking about. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we're we really um, excited about this whole concept of the new consumer journey. Um, I think the way that we see it is, is quite simple, right? Because of what we already established that these users, uh, particularly millennials, um, who have their phone in their hand, you know, day in and day out, um, we realize that for them, it's really as they go out along the day, the reality is that they're interacting with the broader web and with their social sphere 
um, throughout multiple touch points in multiple screens and at multiple moments. So that's really what we're calling this consumer journey is this capability of each brand um, being able to identify and being able to tap into what is the correct moment that they want to speak to to their audience, right? So depending on who that audience is or who their 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 ideal subject is, they they will have a different consumer journey where they will be interacting in the morning, you know, right after they woke up, maybe they're checking the first thing that they're doing, and I think most of us fall into this trap, right? Regardless of the fact that if we are we're not millennials. But you know, one of the first things that we do is we pick up our phone and we're checking, you know, what happened in the social world while I was asleep, you know? How many people reacted to something that I posted or or, or what is the, 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 you know, the trending conversation of the moment or whatever the case may be. Uh, and then as our day progresses, our interactions through this consumer journey are really focused on all these different apps that we're interacting with on a daily basis, either from the music that we want to you know, listen to in Spotify while we're working out or we're traveling you know, to ways that's going to take us from point A to point B as we, you know, we're getting ready to go to work or go to school or whatever the case may be, when we're checking in, when we got to work and see who else, which of our coworkers are around or when we're opening up Foursquare to see where we want to go to lunch, you know, when we're opening up LinkedIn to basically see what's happening with a more professionally data curated sort of environment and so on and so forth, right? There are all these multiple touch points that, are, that we're now picking and choosing how we want to interact with the information that's accessible for us both in terms of media and in terms of uh, our social interactions. I thought you guys did an exceptional job, really, of outlining that in such simple terms because from, you know, they ha you have someone in bed looking at their phone, the apps they're using, on the way to work, the apps they're using, and it just made me realize, you know, for a brand here especially, how difficult it would be to know and to tap into each one of those times and devices. And that's directly where IMS comes in. Can you tell us how you're working with your partners? Because you're working with Spotify, LinkedIn, Twitter, huge names here. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I think each of these companies obviously has a core story that they, that they have honed in as far as how they're adding value into, their, into the ecosystem in general. And I think from our standpoint, as we're seeing how advertisers who we are working with um, on a very close uh, sort of hand-in-hand -hand way, how they're reacting to this whole notion and they're telling us, they're coming back to us and they're saying, we want to be able to tap in into this consumer journey and understand what that means for our brand. Um, we want to understand how, um, you know, our interaction through the multitude of these apps that IMS is helping um, bring to the table into this part of the conversation in terms of their lifetime investment. They want to understand how they can hone in and really be able to build that consumer journey that touches upon multiple elements and, and multiple apps throughout the day. That brings me to your recent partnership with Vivo. So first of all, congratulations on that. Next, Thank can you. you dive into how big video advertising is going to be in Latin America? Because out of the 11 billion monthly views that Vivo got in one month, 1.4 billion were from Mexico. <laughs> It's massive. Um, you know, not only that 1.4 million is from Mexico, but if we take the top five um, Spanish-speaking countries in LATAM, you're looking at 2.5 billion um, per month, right? So it, it's really, it's really it massive. Fa fathomable. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing, um, and it's only going to keep on growing. You know, the reality is, again, um, we we've already sort of established how strong the LATAM interaction is in terms of. Um, uh, their digital penetration in terms of uh, the consumption, media over indexing, and, and a lot of these different elements. And then we throw in one of the strongest passion points, you know, for the Latin consumer, which is obviously music. Um, so, you know, the, the reality is we're seeing how, how the, and I, the reality is the, one of the highest uh, elements of consumption when it comes to video is music videos. So it's a perfect storm. We're seeing that there's going to be a significant demand um, for music videos uh, online in LATAM. And, and for us, that, that's what really made this partnership extremely exciting because Vivo is, uh, in, in, in everything that we're understanding and, and, and by far established as the leading uh, company that, that's dominating within this platform. What got me really interested was throughout that whole panel that Ren hosted, I think it was at Internet Week. Mm -hmm. It really seemed that the main theme was one size does not fit all. And 
what lended into that and really got me thinking was the excitement of local partners equally who want to get in on these apps. Can you explain that? Yeah, um, there's definitely a group of uh, companies that do transcend and do have a broader uh, or regional uh, sort of um, umbrella uh, approach where they where they try or where they um, in some in a lot of cases are very successful in in, in trying to sort of uh, unify whatever their message and and maybe with some localized components. But the reality is there's a very strong opportunity for local advertisers who also want to harness that conversation. Um, you know because it, it makes a lot of sense for them to be speaking through music or in association with music videos, um, you know, either because their audience is clearly an audience that is identifying and is consuming, and, and as we already established, the, the, the numbers are so large that it's, very di- it's probably going to be difficult to, you know, to find brands where it doesn't make sense for them to participate in, in that, in that uh, part of the, in that type of conversation. But, but the reality is um, we know that music creates very strong emotions and creates a very strong sense of engagement. So there's no reason why we cannot also uh, speak to leading brands on a local basis that, that now for the first time will have this opportunity to be able to couple up with some of the strongest artists um, in terms of their video or music video capabilities and be able to present their communications objectives and be able to touch uh, the audience that they want to impact in their local territories through an application like Vivo. So, you know, again, it makes us very excited to be able to work with them both on a regional as well as on a local basis. When it comes to Latin America in particular, your founder shared something along those lines of having to combine the local and the global and really taking a very well thought out approach. And he shared that companies who want to have a long-term presence in the region need to be ready to adapt. Why is that? Um, I think one of the things that that, that I always find interesting is it's very easy to fall into the trap of, of looking at LATAM as a sort of a homogeneous territory. You know, I think separating the obviously the big division in, in language between the Brazil and the and the Spanish speaking side of LATAM, um, the, the reality is there are a lot of differences, a lot of nuances, um, in, in not only in terms of accents uh, in the different Spanish that's spoken, but also culturally. Um, you know, some countries are more open or more receptive than others for some components. Other countries tend to move in different directions. So, so the reality is there is a local sensitivity that we have to be very uh, mindful in terms of what are we looking for, how a brand is going to be able to maximize um, their communication objectives in one country versus another country. And maybe there's a layer that can be overarching in terms of talking about overall uh, LATAM, but the reality is brands that are uh, that I think that we see are most successful are the brands that, be, that, that, are ma- that manage to have that conversation on those two levels. Maybe having that overarching, but definitely knowing how to best uh, take that conversation at that local basis as well. Distilling it down, what would you say is the first step a company should take to bring their content, their product, their app to Latin America? Um, I, that's that's probably a, a, a multifaceted answer uh, <laughs> question. I'll take a but, multifaceted answer. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the reality is brands, uh, big brands that want to are we talking about in terms of an app coming into LATAM or a brand that wants to advertise in LATAM? I'd love to talk about both and I'd also love to talk about a startup perhaps that doesn't have as many resources but wants to experiment. So you can go multifaceted all the way. <laughs> so so in terms of, let's let's break it apart. So in terms of, a, of an app that wants to go into LATAM, um, I think that there's probably a, a moment when they've started to hit that critical mass. Um, you know, certainly uh, we've managed to position ourselves, IMS has managed to position ourselves in a, in a place where we, we've really been able to play this game now where we're, where we're picking as much as we've been picked in terms of the partners that we are working with. Um, we have a very deliberate strategy where we're working with the leaders in each one of the different categories. Um, and, you know, we're very fortunate that we are in that position. Um, and, and it sort of helped us build this portfolio of brands that are very complementary, which you know in turn created this consumer journey component, right? Because there is an element which is very different, is very complementary between one brand, or one app, and the other app. Um, so in terms of apps wanting to come in, I think um, it, overall it has it really they really have to understand where they are in terms of that consumer base in LATAM. Um, and I think that's where there's different ways that they can interact with a company like us. Um, you know, if it's a brand that's really an app that's really in an earlier stage, 
and uh, wants to sort of gain that critical mass and gain that positioning, we can help them or we have helped other brands um, gain in that user acquisition space, right? Be able to help them expand and position their app effectively within the region, um, explain to the consumer base why they should be using this app, um, you know, obviously help them grow that base and, and prepare them for what would potentially be a next stage, which would be that monetization stage. Um, and that monetization stage in terms of media, comp media uh, solutions, um, it really, really has to come in hand in hand again with a lot of these other elements. Number one is, do they have that critical mass that makes it effective for them um, to be able to have that conversation with the top leading brands? So we already crossed a little bit over from um, working with the top leading apps to then being able to bring that conversation or that opportunity to the top leading advertising brands, both on a regional and on a local basis. Um, you know, obviously there's there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of different players. That's just the space that we occupy. Um, you know, we, we try to connect those leading opportunities, both in the supply and the demand side, um, in order to, to create the, the sort of the largest impact. You mentioned your partners and that you guys are now working with many of the leading brands in each domain. I know that's your sole focus is working on these partnerships. What's a typical day like for you? For me personally? Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it, it, it varies. Um, I, I do sort of wear three different hats um, within IMS. Um, my first hat is, has been primarily the, the one that we've been talking about, which is the business development role, um, where I participate and sort of try and, and, and lead the conversation with the different companies that are in the process of um, uh, sort of developing a relationship with IMS in terms of what is the business model going to be? Are they ready? Are we ready to work hand in hand in LATAM? Um, you know, maybe the ones that are a little bit further line in terms of building that revenue model or, or how we are going to work together. What is the structure of our partnership going to look like? All the way down to developing the actual contract and, you know, working with our legal and our finance team to actually then close that deal. Um, so that is that is you know pretty much where my uh, BD hat lies, right? We we just recently announced this partnership that we just closed with Vivo, and there are other partnerships that are in different stages of that continuum that I just represented. Um, then my second hat sort of goes over to companies that have already been closed um, and that I've already helped sort of hire the team vertically that's going to work in with each one of those partners in the different countries within LATAM and then you know helping them sort of uh, manage in, in, in a few of those cases so in, a, in three of those brands I manage the team that then also is in charge of, of selling across you know multiple countries whatever that product that they're that they're running and then my third hat <laughs> is I actually um, have responsibility for all lines of revenue that hit our US office. Um, so currently we have about 12 lines of revenue and I have horizontal responsibility over that. So your consumer journey is that you're just on your email all the time. You don't even have the other devices. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's uh, taxing sometimes, but it's a lot of fun too. Mentioning that, what's your favorite part of the job? Um, I really like understanding, you know, all these different uh, apps. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a true believer in in this whole di digital ecosystem and how it's transformed our life. I mean, my first internet job was back in '99, um, and um, you know, the reality is, I, 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 if it were up to me, I would have never done anything other than digital. I think, um, you know, I'm really happy to be able to participate in. In, in you know having these conversations with these brands that are really these apps that are you know really leading the you know the, the development and how we interact both in an internet and a social and a in a digital world you know I, th I find that to be very exciting. I'm glad you mentioned apps because as I was sharing that conversation that Marin had really stayed with me because we had Foursquare, Twitter, and. Spotify, which are similar but also very different, and they're meeting people on different parts of the consumer journey. And they're talking about two big markets. The first one was e-commerce. 60% of users have purchased something online, and they were also mentioning the difference in payments. Can you touch on that a little bit? Uh, and what part of payments specifically? What Help me understand where you want to hone When it comes, I'd love to start out with just e-commerce in general and how you see that evolving there. Well, I'm going to try and narrow down 
the conversation a little bit more into LATAM, right? So, so the reality is we still we're, we're, we we need to see an evolution where LATAM is still very quickly catching up um, in terms of comfort level and uh, payment systems penetration uh, within the different t countries. So, some countries are a little bit more advanced than others. Um, and, they're, and in the same way that uh, the social acceptance or the, the social comfort um, with using your credit card for online payments um, is more advanced in some countries than others. So I think that as we see those two elements um, progress, we're going to see the prevalence of e-commerce and mobile commerce and you know, app commerce continue to grow. Um, you know, again, I think that having a foot in the U.S. and, and being able to understand and observe uh, sort of the trends that take place in, in the U.S. Is, is very easy for us to then see how we're going to maybe see that reflected with different levels of, of lag in, in some of the different countries in LATAM. Um, and then there's a, probably another nuance behind that, and that is also observing how the U.S. Hispanic population really behaves within the U.S., right? Because there we have maybe another sort of, you know, layer of gray between how the U.S. general market behaves, but then here we have, you know, people that originally or to a certain extent maybe were descendant from Latinos and who are interacting or are, or are embedded within the U.S. culture, so they've assimilated to different degrees or to different levels, um, but they're reacting and they're, they're acting, bringing some of these cultural components that are very akin or very similar to what, they, what we see in Latin America. You know, the same way that we see Latin Americans over-indexed with their social components and with their, you know, social media um, behavior, we see that trend also with the U.S. Hispanics. So we can see that correlation and it also helps us sort of identify how things are going to continue moving forward. When it comes to e-commerce in Latin America specifically, are there any markets that are doing significantly better than others? Um, I think we, we like in many sense when we look at LATAM and we try to sort of break out the map, we do see that Brazil is quite advanced in some elements and we see that Mexico is also quite advanced in some elements. Um, you know, the, in addition to the fact that they're two biggest territories in terms of both media spend and in terms of um, uh, online users, we also do see that they, are t they tend to um, uh, be a little bit further down the spectrum in terms of their acceptance and their adoption of e-commerce as well. Great. So I want to shift gears for just a couple minutes before we close on streaming content, because I was shocked to learn that that's set to triple in the next three years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think other elements also really come into play significantly here as, as, as data plans become more accessible in the countries. Um, you know, different apps and different companies are also starting to strike great deals with their carriers, um, which allow users to benefit either for a time being or for whatever the, or for whatever the case may be um, uh, in terms of, of how they access online and how they, they consume data. Um, I think we're, we're starting to see that as, as the market matures in, in that element as well the consumption of media and the consumption of data streaming is, is obviously going to continue to evolve and continue to grow the same way. You know, so eventually we'll get to the point where, you know, we anticipate that it'll get to the point where the behavior will be similar to what it is in the U.S. where you're buying packages um, and then you're basically either consuming, you know, to the max of that package or, or you know, as much as you can. Um, and again, how we, we, we can tell and because we see that there's a significant amount of these consumers that are only accessing the web via their mobile phone and are consuming all of their digital media via their mobile phone. Um, for them, it's really a, a priority. So the minute that they have Wi-Fi access and the minute that they have you know, better data packages that allow them to consume more, you know, there's, really not an, there's really no end to the amount of, uh, of data and the amount of streaming that they could you know, potentially consume. That's great. All right, last question. If you could give everyone a single piece of advice about marketing in Latin America and it would come wrapped in a nice fortune cookie so you'd crack the fortune cookie and you'd get the little sheet what would you write in there yeah one size does not fit all I love it and that's what I would love to link to the great discussion Brent had because it is incredibly important I appreciate so much you taking the time today before we go can you let us know how everyone can get in touch especially for brands who want to start working with IMS Absolutely. So our, our website is imscorporate.com and info at IMS Corporate. And we'd love to hear from different opportunities. 
um, different brands that are starting to look at Latam again. Um, you know, depending on where these brands are, depending on where these apps are, or whatever the case may be, and in terms of an app that wants to go into Latam, um, we have a potentially a different. There's a different conversation to be had. And in terms of brands that want to advertise in Latam, um, I think that there's an incredible opportunity out there for them. There's so many different things that we can do together, and we'd love to hear from them as well. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.